What's up everybody, David here, and on today's episode of Firecast, we're gonna be covering Angular and Firebase. But as a reminder to you, this is just one episode and many on Firebase in the web. So we're gonna be covering things like authentication, real-time database, storage, Firebase cloud messaging, Firebase hosting. So pretty much anything that's Firebase in the web is gonna be in that series, including things like JavaScript frameworks, like Angular, Ember, React, and Polymer. So if you wanna see those videos, make sure to subscribe so you can get updated when we drop those. But today we're gonna to be covering Angular and Firebase, and we're gonna be using the Angular Fire library, which is the official library for using Angular and Firebase together. So it's super easy to get started with, and it's also really easy to use. So let's get started. So to set up Angular and Firebase, you create an Angular app module as you usually would with Angular module and the module name. And then inside of the dependency array, you declare the Firebase module to get Angular Fire. And once you do that, you get a whole host of awesome services that you can use in your app. And while all these services are super cool, we're gonna be setting up a project from scratch today and then talking a little bit about Firebase object. So I'm in my terminal and I'm going to set up my project from scratch using the Firebase CLI. So I'm gonna write Firebase init, and this is going to give me some sweet emoji art. And I know I call it out every single time, but I mean, come on, it's amazing. So now I'm gonna select a hosting project, and then I'm gonna select my Firebase project, set the default database rules, and now this part is super important. I know I call it out like every single time, but this can really, really trip you up if you don't get it right. So it's good to focus on. So what do we want to use as our public directory? And this is where your index.html file lives. And so this is the entry point to your application. So for me, I'm a simple man and my public folder is usually called public. So I'm going to have the Firebase CLI write my 404 and my index.html, and then after that, my initialization is complete. So I'm going to clear the console, and now I'm going to set up my local development server. And I can do that by typing Firebase serve. And this is going to throw a local server on port 5000. So right here in the browser, you can see we have our default page. And now I'm going to set up Angular Fire. So all the Angular Fire information you're going to want to read is at github.com slash Firebase slash Angular Fire. And it contains all the source code and including some documentation. So you can see there's a table of contents where it has a little quick start, information on downloading it, documentation, examples, and lots of other awesome stuff. So to see how to download it, I'm going to click that link. And I'm going to copy these three scripts. And so it's Angular itself, the Firebase SDK, and the Angular Fire library. And just to note, you can also do this through an npm install or a Bower install if that's your thing. So now in my app, I'm going to go into the header section and paste in these three scripts. And then I'm going to delete all of these filler elements. Now, the first step for initializing an Angular app is by providing the ng app directive. So on the body tag, I'm going to write ng app and give it my app's name, which is super creative by being called app. So now that we have this initialized, I'm gonna create an app.js file in my public folder. And then I'm gonna wrap everything in an iffy because you know JavaScript's got function scope. So to declare my Angular app, I'm going to use an Angular module. So I'm going to write angular.module, and then my app name, which is app, and then specify the dependency array. And this is where I can include the Angular Fire module. So its module name is Firebase. And this will give me access to inject all of the services that we saw in the beginning of the video. So Angular really loves dependency injection, and that's how you use every single Firebase service. So I'm going to create a controller, and I'm going to call it my controller, and then I'm going to provide the controller function. 
and it's right inside of this function where I can inject anything I need from Angular Fire as a parameter. So this is where I'm going to use Firebase object. So I'm going to specify that I want Firebase object. And then now in my controller, I can create a property called this.object and then set it to Firebase object, which is a function that takes in a database reference. So since I've provided the Firebase JavaScript library, I can just go and create a reference using Firebase.database. So Firebase.database.ref. So I'm going to dive into the child of Angular. And that's because this database right here is kind of like one big mega database, and I'm just pretending that Angular is the root of this database. So from here, I want to nest one more time into the child of object. So essentially what I've done here is I've gone to root, and then I have a property of Angular. And then within Angular, it has a property of object. And then this ref variable points to this location right here. So by passing this reference to the Firebase object, it will be able to synchronize any of the data at the object location to my Angular app. So anytime any updates occur in the real-time database, it will synchronize those changes to my Angular app and update my template in real time. And lastly, I need to initialize Firebase. So to initialize Firebase, you say Firebase.initialize app and you provide a config variable. And this config variable you locate in the Firebase console. So this is all my config information. And with that, I'm ready to create my template. So back in index.html, I want to make sure that I'm referencing this script. So source to app.js. And then now I want to specify this div as the container for my controller. So I can do that by using ng controller and then setting the name to controller as controller. So inside this ng controller will be my template. And so what I want to do is I just want to display this object in a pre tag. So I'll create a pre and then I'll do controller.object and then do a filter to JSON. And actually due to the nature of pre tags, I need to move this all the way to the back so it formats correctly. So here in the browser, we have my data to the left. We have Angular, and then object, and then an object has a property of name. But over here in the actual web app, we have this object with this dollar $ID and dollar $priority. And then the only thing that really looks familiar is the name property. So if these dollar $IDs and dollar $priorities don't exist in the database, why do they exist here in the page? Well, that's because when you synchronize data from the real-time database to your application, it comes back as a snapshot. And a snapshot has properties like key and priority. And if you want to get the value back from the snapshot, you call the .val function. So in Angular Fire, we want to automatically unwrap the snapshot to get back the value. But having the key and priority is still really, really important. So we surface them through these dollar properties. And these dollar properties are always stripped from the client. So you'll never see them here in the database, and you don't ever have to even think about maintaining them. So to test out this app, I'm going to delete some data. And you can see that it updates in my app in real time. So now we know that our app is working. So rather than deploying it locally, let's deploy it using Firebase hosting. So in the command line, I'm just going to do a Firebase deploy. And this will deploy everything in the public folder. And once it's done, I can just open up my hosting site at this URL right here. And just like that, we've deployed to Firebase hosting with that sweet SSL lock. So that's how you get started with Angular and Firebase. And if you want to learn more, then just stay tuned because we have another screencast that will take you deeper with Angular Fire. And also, if you want to learn more in the meantime, just check out the docs, which are in the links in the description. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. So that's all for this time. I will see you guys later.